All right, friends, welcome back to the sawmill. It is a hot day in Tennessee. It's about 90 degrees today, getting pretty warm. This is Cherry. I started this log in the previous video. If you've not seen that video, go watch that one before you watch this one because I kind of explain how we saw up Cherry here at my sawmill. We're getting some really good boards out of this. Right now our width is 17 inches, but we do have a lot of sapwood, and you guys know what that means. You gotta get rid of sapwood on cherry. And if you don't know what that means, go watch that previous video where I go over all that stuff as far as the uh, solid technique for cherry that we do here at my mill. But right now, we need to flip this over 180 and start on the other side. All right, friends, so on this log, on this top face right here, I have exhausted all the good lumber the grade lumber that's gonna come off of this. I could keep going down, but the grade's gonna start diminishing the more cuts you make. So I'm gonna flip it 180 and start on this side right here. The first few boards will have some sapwood on them. You can see that right there in the corner. We will edge those off before we stack these up for air drying. And I'll probably get about three really nice boards. The first one, not so much. Number two and number three should be really nice. And then we'll flip this log up on these planes right here and start grade sawing off them until we work our way to the pith and we'll discard that because the pith and cherry, friends, is junk right there. Now I say that's junk, but you can actually get something out of it. And here's what you could do. In my situation, I have two options. Number one, I can saw this down to like a five by five or a six by six. I could anchor seal it again, maybe two coats of anchor seal, put it somewhere out of the wind, out of light, and let it slowly dry, and maybe, just maybe, in about four or five years, you might have a decent mantle out of something like this. But your chances of that are about 50-50, more so in favor of it cracking and being a complete waste. But that's one option I have, and I may do that, I'm not sure yet. And the other option would be, go ahead and just pull it back cut it down to firewood lengths and put it with your firewood and you're done. That's probably the best option because you have no time in that and you're not going to be stacking this up, taking up real estate and also your time and anchor sealing it and moving it around over the next four to five years, hoping that it dries properly. Now, having said that, if you're in a different situation that I'm in, let's say that you're a sawmill that produces a lot of lumber, you're sawing 12 hours a day, five days a week, and you don't want to have a loss like that, and you don't want to take a chance on a mantle, you could call around and see who's buying cross ties because this can make a cross tie out of the middle. A lot of the larger sawmills out there in the industrial parts, they won't count this as a loss right here. They will saw a cross tie out of the middle of this log. That way they can get something out of it. And I'll be right back. There's a giant airplane going over. Y'all hear that? All right, I was wrong about that. That was three military helicopters. I thought it was an airplane. So anyways, like I was saying, you don't want to lose this board footage right here in the middle if you're buying this log. So find somebody locally that buys cross ties, and you're not gonna get a lot of money out of a cross tie, but it's better than nothing. It's better than putting this on the back burner and hoping it doesn't crack and getting a mantle, and it's a lot better than firewood prices. So. Look around, there's probably larger sawmills in your area that do buy cross ties, or you can find a dealer or a wholesale guy who buys cross ties off lots of different mills, and once you get a decent amount, he'll come buy them, or maybe you could take them to him, I don't know. There's a guy down the road that buys cross ties, you just have to put them on a trailer and deliver them. I'm not sure what he's paying though, to be honest with you.
out, friends. I have been sawmilling since 2010. I think that's the first time I ran the wood miser was 2010. And I've sawed a lot of cherry in my day, and that cherry log right there was the best cherry I have ever sawmilled in my 13-year career as a sawyer. That was a nice one. Really good boards, limited sap, and really nice color, and limited defects or not. So these boards look really nice. I'm really happy with how they turned out. Now we need to finish up this log and edge these boards that are on the loading arms. I think I've got about six or seven to edge, but before we do that, we got two things to take care of. Number one, the second board of the day had some really nice figure. We're gonna throw some water on it. And number two, let me show you guys what was left on the sawmill. It's a five by six cant with the heart in it. And this right here, friend, shows why the pith in cherry and most hardwoods is completely useless. So right there is the cant we were left with. It's five by six. Right there is the pith right in the middle. Got a lot of cracking going on, but what's really important right here is to look on the face. That crack continues on this face going up through there. You come down about 30 inches and that's where it gets worse, guys. Check that out. Look at those cracks right there on the face. Coming right down through here in the juvenile core of this log. And this right here, friends, will get worse. These cracks will open up and get wider. And this little cant right here will pretty much explode over time. But that cracking just gets worse, the full length of the cant right there. The only use for something like this, like I was saying earlier, would be a cross tie. You might get a little bit of money out of it with that, but that's about it. So having said that, we are going to get something out of this terrible cant. A little bit of firewood. I've already got a few marks on here showing 16 inches. That's how long I like my firewood to be for my wood stove. Hello ladies, you guys enjoying your day?
right guys, I'm done sawing for the day because I need to get the kiln emptied out. Hopefully that will happen tomorrow. Then I need to put some quarter saw and white oak in the kiln and that will make room on the drying pad for all the cherry we need to saw. So hopefully those two things happen tomorrow, fingers crossed. So now we're down here in the shop and we're going to run some shiplap or I mean, I'm getting ahead of myself. We're going to run some pine through the molder and make some shiplap. But before we do that, let me show you guys the doors and how they're looking. So this door right here, friends, is about 90% done. And I think it looks pretty good. What do you guys think? I like it. I've been using my router to trim up these edges right here with the frame. I still have to do that bottom right there. You can see it overhanging just a little. We'll take care of that maybe tomorrow. That won't take just a few minutes. But right now, I'm to the point that I need to start adding some batten strips right here on the top. Then I'll put some finish on it and this door will pretty much be done and we'll be ready to hang it up. But after that, I've got to build another one. But the second one is not as big. And I've also decided to put some stain on this pine. I'm going to stain it cherry and then put some uh, marine water lots over top of that to seal it up really nice. I think it'll look pretty good. Fingers crossed. I hope it looks pretty good. I've never used cherry stain with water lots before, but I've used water lots a whole lot in the past building furniture, and I've always had good results from it. So, real fast, if you're new to this channel, this is the Woodmiser MP260. It's a four-sided molder, which means it cuts the lumber, or planes the lumber, rather, on all four sides. A really good machine. And right there is the dust extractor that's also made by Woodmiser, or it's really good. And all the wood chips that come out of this machine go outside. Right here's the pine we're gonna be running through today. These have been pre-sized through the planer. I skip planed them down to one inch. And we also ran these through my buddy's edger a couple of weeks ago, so they're pretty much pre-sized for this molder, which makes a better product. And right here's what we're making, friends. This right here is shiplap, and it's got an eighth of an inch reveal. And this looks really good with the reveal. And what that means is the boards do not butt right against each other. There's about an eighth of an inch gap between them. Looks really good. Uh, let me show you guys an example of that, just so you know what I'm talking about. You see the shiplap right there, and you see the reveal right there between the boards. Looks really good, I like it. 